and welcome to day 23 of the physics, uh, 24 day physics of Travis Downs. It's only this and one day to go. And today we're going to focus on something to do with circular motion. So this is actually a question from an A-level paper one. Okay. And as I said mainly in a lot of my videos is that paper two relies a lot on circular motion, but this is like the pure form of circular motion that we're going to do here. So the side view of an act performed by acrobats is viewed from above. The acrobats have a mass of 85 kilos and are suspended from the ropes attached to opposite edge. The diameter of the platform <coughs> is two meters. The motor rotates the platform so the acrobats move at a constant speed in a constant horizontal circle. So what they're doing is they're moving uh, sort of that way around like that, okay? The, when the period of rotation, so the time period of the rotation is 5.2, and the mass of each atra is uh, the mass of it is five meters below the platform. The angles are twenty eight point five uh, to the vertical shown in Figure one. Show that the linear speed of the acrobats is four point five meters per second. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got my weight of that there. I've got my tension here. Okay, and I know that V equals omega R, and omega equals two pi F. Or as what well, because we've got a time period two pi over t. Okay, so in this case it's going to be two pi over five point two. So that's going to be one point two one. Okay. Okay, and now what we're going to do here is we need to look at the radius. So the radius of the from the centre. So of course, when you're doing circular motion, it's from the centre of the circle that's made. And so if you look at this diagram here, it's going to be from this point here because that's where the point is rotating around. So this platform is two meters. This is one meter, and this thing here. So this is five meters, and I'm after this. So the angle wise. 19 minus 28.5 is 61.5. So this here is 61.5. So tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. So adjacent equals opposite over tan theta. So this thing here, my adjacent, is going to be 5 over tan 61.5. So Tan answer five divided by that, I get an answer of 2.71. So my total radius is going to be 2.71 plus one. So R equals 2.71 plus one, which is 3.71. So V equals 1.21 times by 3.71. So times by 1.21, and that equals a grand total, oops. So 3.71 times by 1.21, I get an answer of 4.49. Okay, so I get 4.49 meters per second, which is approximately 4.5 meters per second there. Okay, so a couple of pitfalls that people fell down in this question in the actual real paper is that extra one meter. So it's important when you're doing circular motion, it's around a point, it's not around a circle, it's around a point. So the radius is measured from a point at the center of the circle, and that's what I did there. But as you notice here, I'm just labeling my diagram. That's absolutely fine. Do that, it helps. Okay, so the next one asks here determine the tension each of the rope that supports the acrobats. Okay. So, I know that here it is a component of the this component here. So, I'm just going to rub this out here, this circle. Okay, it is this component of the tension, so this T in the X direction, which is actually the centripetal force. Okay, so I know that T in the X equals the centripetal force. And that is going to be mv squared over r. So that's going to be 85 times by 4.49 squared divided by my radius, which is 3.71. Okay. So square that times by 85, because that's the mass of the acrobat. And divided by 3.71 is 461.7. Sixty-one point seven newtons. Okay, 
So I know that the force going in towards the centre of the circle is 461 newtons. This angle is again 61.5. Okay, so this is the adjacent and that is hypotenuse. So I know that cos 61.5 equals the adjacent, which is 461.7 over, okay, the uh, tension, which is the hypotenuse. So my tension equals 461.7 over cos 61.5, and that's going to be uh, 967.6. There you go, so we've got 967.6 newtons there. Again, if there's a line, you must draw it. Now, there are numerous ways you could have done this. I'll just show you the mark scheme for this. So the method I actually did, so they're allowing answers between 950 and 970, depending on rounding. So this is the method that I did. I found the centripetal force, and then I used components to work out. I went, okay, so tension in the x direction is the centripetal force, and that's what I did there to get all my marks. You could have done, of course, doing uh, Pythagoras instead of actually doing a um, thing, because you know it's in equilibrium in one direction, so you've got the weight going down, the centripetal force. You could have done uh, that there. That's another way of doing it. Okay, so both methods were perfectly valid. The method I did is probably the one that, in my head, I would have gone to first because I'm doing components of forces. Okay, so... Last question, discuss the consequences of the forces acting on the pole when one acrobat has much greater mass than the other, okay? So it means that one of the, they're both equal masses-ish, but one has got a much greater mass than the other, okay? So if you actually think about that from an actual scale point of view, what will happen, of course, is that the there would be on balanced uh, forces on each side of the, um, what's it called, is it a swing? Platform, there you go, of the platform, okay? So if you think about it, what's actually going to happen, not from a circular motion point of view, but actually looking at it from a force point of view, if they are the same masses each time, especially on something that's got a pivot in the middle, they're going to be balanced, okay? But when you've got, when you've got much greater mass on one side, you have an unbalanced force. The side with the acrobat of greater mass would um, have a greater tension in the rope. Okay, so it says discuss the concepts of the forces. So I'm not going to be talking about the speed, I'm just talking about the forces. So there'll be unbalanced forces each other platform. The side of the acrobat will have a much greater tension in the rope. Okay. So the consequences of the forces. So if you've got a, a consequence of a greater force, especially in something like this, would be that it would tilt. It would have a moment. It would have an unbalanced moment and therefore would tilt towards the heavier thing. So side with the greater mass would have a greater tension in the rope. This would cause an unbalanced moment and whoop, the pole would tilt towards the heavier acrobat, okay? So what I'm talking about is it says discuss the consequences. So this is a discuss question. You're actually talking about what could happen. So what I'm doing here of the forces, so the consequences of the forces when the one acrobat has a much greater mass. Firstly, a consequence, if you've got a greater mass than the other, the forces would be unbalanced, okay? This would then cause um, a, a greater tension, so it's greater force in the rope on the one with a higher mass. 
Now, the consequences of all this greater force malarque is that there will be an unbalanced moment which will cause the pole to tilt towards the heavier acrobat. Now, this question normally when I mark it actually answers quite well because students get this idea of the fact that the acrobat on one side would be heavier, that it would cause uh, a tilting motion towards the other. So actually look at the mark scheme for this. There's quite a lot of things you can grab in the mark scheme for this. So for this one, the vertical compressor force on the pole increases, which increased mass, hence the tension of the rope being the same angle. Uh, the centripetal force on the mass would not, uh, the centripetal force would not be equal, or the would be greater on the massive acrobat. There's unbalanced forces on the force existing, which I wrote. Okay. So I've mentioned that the increased mass causes a big tension. There'll be unbalanced forces on the pole, and that will cause an unbalanced moment, which would cause it to tilt. Okay, so I didn't do it in that order, but that's what I'm writing. I'm writing about these consequences. The thing with the bigger mass, there'll be an unbalanced force that would cause more tension in the rope, and that unbalanced force would cause an unbalanced moment. It's the consequence of that greater force. It would cause an unbalanced moment, which would cause the pole to bend. Okay, so a discussed question, it's almost like you're trying to explain what would happen if. Okay, so what would happen if this was the case? It's normally with discussed questions that are hypothetical questions that they want to ask you what could happen if. So this is what I'm doing. I'm using my physics to say there'll be an unbalanced force, um, which would cause more tension on the rope, um, which would then in turn cause an unbalanced uh, moment, which would cause the whole thing to tilt. So there you have it, there's day 23 of the 24-day extravaganza.